McPherson and members of the committee. For the record, I'm Representative Sarah Gelser, and I represent House District 16, which includes Corvallis and Philomath down in Benton County. I appreciate the opportunity to testify in support of House Bill 3329. My chief co-sponsor, Representative Patty Smith, is unable to be here today due to illness, but she does send her regrets and says that she has written testimony that you may already have or it may be on the way. But it was a great privilege to be able to bring this to you in cooperation with Representative Smith and also the co-sponsors that are on the bill. I was very surprised to learn that strangulation is not a felony, that it's a misdemeanor. And as I've talked to constituents and others about the bills that I'm sponsoring this session, and this one comes up, the consistent response that I get back from people is, strangulation isn't a felony, strangulation is only a misdemeanor, and this is true. I've also been surprised to learn in, research, in researching this issue that strangulation has only been considered a crime on its own merits since 2003 when uh, the legislature made that a misdemeanor. Strangulation is one of the most common acts of violence against women in domestic violence situations. It is also frequently used during the commission of rape. Unconsciousness can occur within 10 to 60 seconds, and death can occur within a matter of minutes. When the victim does not die, this act can cause internal injuries that may lead to brain damage, and in some cases, even death, days or weeks after the attack. Strangulation, besides the physical injuries, is a, a tool of tremendous manipulation, where an abuser gains tremendous power over the person that, that he is attacking and attempting to control. The repeated use of strangulation is one of the ways these abusers maintain and keep control over their victims. Finally, domestic violence experts know that when an abuser uses strangulation as a method of control, it is an indicator that the situation is likely to become fatal and that he will eventually kill his victim. It only makes sense that such a violent crime would be classified as a felony in certain situations. House Bill 3329 accomplishes this by elevating the crime of strangulation to a Class C felony when the act is committed in front of children, when the perpetrator has previously been convicted of strangulation charges, or when the perpetrator has previously been convicted of violent acts against the same victim. Women who are victimized by rape and domestic violence are often fearful to come forward for help and legal protection. It's difficult for them to seek help, to press charges, and to testify. Enhancing the crime of strangulation to a felony will provide some of these women greater protection from their abusers. It will also underscore the severity of this violation. Strangulation is a serious matter. The law should reflect this. I thank you for considering this bill and urge you to move to a work session today. I hope that on behalf of victims of rape and domestic violence in the state of Oregon and others that may become victims of strangulation, you will move this bill with a due pass recommendation. We have several advocates and other experts in the arena of domestic violence here today who can speak more specifically to why we need to underscore this very serious affront to um, women and others in the state of Oregon.